dystopia warning, obviously. Now I've been immersed in British politics for the last four years. Yeah, a video about the US election is probably one of the most difficult videos that I've ever had to make. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to impart many jokes, but what I will give you is the truth as, as well as I know it, based on what I've read from credible sources, including journalists, investigative journalists, and what I've observed of US politics and politics broadly. As I said prior to the election, I had no faith at all that he was going to lose this election because the horrors of what I've seen from watching how politics has unfolded over the last six, eight years has taught me not to have faith in people anymore. And that's not just based on the ignorance and hatred of people, but their willingness to repeat untruths and their refusal or inability to read beyond a headline or to even accept basic facts. Now, it's quite clear to anyone with sense that isn't immersed in a cult precisely what Trump is and what he represents to these people. And no, it's not about loving America. It's not about loving your country. It's about who you hate, and how that hate is weaponized and amplified by one of the most bizarre creatures that I've ever actually seen in my life. He looks like a caricature. What's interesting to me is what caused those people to hate, how it was amplified broadly beyond him. It all comes back to the tech bros, to the bot farms, the foreign interference, but people have to be useful idiots. They have to choose to actually do what is expected of them. They have to buy it. There has to be a market for it. There were reports last night of over 40 different fake bomb threats called into democratic leaning polling stations coming from Russia. It might be some time before we find out if there was any interference, if we ever find out at all, which is incredibly unlikely now, considering the enormity of what those idiots have done. But you definitely can't apply the forgive them for they know not what they do. They know exactly what he is. And I really don't think it's hyperbole at this point to say that what they've done is they've elected a KKK endorsed white Taliban into one of the most influential positions in Western politics based on pure lies, which they probably, again, knew were lies, especially regarding things like the economy and inflation, which were proven to be factually inaccurate. In fact, mass deportations will massively economically damage America. There's only a handful of people that will truly benefit from what happened today, from the chaos and the harm that is going to ensue. That's the autocrats, the billionaires, Peter Thiel, Musk, Trump, Putin, with some of the aforementioned billionaires already eyeing up positions in the new administration. Now you've got the newspapers in Britain trying to blame the black vote when the only opposition in great numbers to this nightmare was black women. There was only a one percentage point difference between black voters in this election and the last election. My heart breaks for black women. They turned up on their own as roughly half of the white population failed them. There was a lot of talk pre-election about women making up a big part of this vote. Well, I hope the women that turned out and voted for this hang their soon to be cloaked heads in shame at what they've not only done to their own gender, but to every marginalized community in America and not just America, but the world. What message do you think that it sends out to rapists all over the world? If one can be elected to be president of the United States of America, despite everybody knowing what he's done. Social media is a swamp at the best of times. Today, you've got men gloating, laughing at women, expressing their concerns that they could have their bodily autonomy taken away as vast proportions of men went out and voted for that. But people saying with their chests that racist white men are now going to have their day. When haven't they had their day? When have they ever truly suffered in the way that they arguably deserve to? Never. More's the pity. But it's coming. You see, I want the people who voted for this and the people who voted for this alone to solely suffer the consequences. But that's not how it's going to work. Though their multifaceted privileges will protect them from the worst of it. As other people live with the consequences of their decisions. People aren't even believing stats showing the disparity between the black and the white vote, which matters. They're disregarding facts and that's the entire problem here. That's exactly how this happened. Without facts, there isn't truth. Without truth, there is no trust. And without truth and trust, there is chaos. There is nothing to stop him. And you get those idiots gloating, going, oh, you lost, oh, cry, get over it. And there's no winners here today. Nobody's won this besides him and him alone and his ultra rich bankrollers, many of whom aren't even American. They can gloat away, yeah, but they're going to suffer the hard reality of this along with the rest of us. I just hope it's worse for them. You see, some people only learn through pain, be it emotional, 
mental, physical, financial. Well, they're going to get it. All of it, probably. I read an important thread today by Seth Abramson, an award-winning journalist and the writer of many bestsellers and a former criminal defence lawyer. He's written a number of books, The Proof of Corruption, The Proof of Collusion, The Proof of Conspiracy. And he wrote a thread today, which he predicts what's going to happen. I recommend you read it if you want to be informed, but the predictions are horrifying. Now, those people who thought that a protest vote in this election was a good idea because they thought it was opposition to the genocide in Gaza. Well, we're likely now to see all of them slaughtered. NATO under threat. No war crime trials. Pardoning many dangerous criminals. Protest is likely to be punished more viciously than ever before. Civil liberties systematically removed. The genocide in Ukraine. The shooting of dissenters. The media controlled entirely by the state. The political rulebook thrown away. No standards in public life. The European Union shrinking, which is exactly what Putin wants. The worst people with full immunity to do whatever they want. Billionaires given a free pass to exploit us and extract our data. Unchecked, uncontrolled police brutality. I can already see the people brave enough to protest this taking their lives in their hands. Women dying in pregnancy at alarming rates. Religious extremism skyrocketing, but it's fine because it'll be white people doing it. Minorities brutalised. It'll be like 1930s Germany, then it'll be like 1940s Germany, except without any opposition or ability to fight it. And after the chaos that he's caused in the West, first in the UK with Brexit, now this, with his cosy little telephone relationship with Musk, Putin has never been more powerful. And we have never, in the West, been more divided. The margins were close. And now we have powerful autocrats joining forces to create a new axis of evil, broadly hard right, broadly racist, anti-LGBT, anti-women. And those idiots that went out and did this caused that for what? To temporarily feel big or powerful that they're kicking down on someone that's probably, I don't know, no better off than them financially. To give an assist to billionaires that will destroy their life as they know it. Slow fucking clap. First it'll be the poor non-whites and immigrants, then it'll be the poor whites. And on and on it'll go. Market crashes. Camps. A failed state. Anyone who calls it out will be ostracised or disappeared probably in one way or another. God help them. God help us. And God help anyone brutalised in the name of God. Because if you know history, you know how this ends. Everyone will suffer. And you've got people like Lewis Goodall going, oh, you know, she, she just wasn't good enough. Yeah, because that's exactly how this worked, isn't it? Nothing to do with racism, misogyny. Nothing to do with, if you zoom out, the power of cults, the power of disinformation, foreign interference, how people are radicalised to vote against their best interests. None of that, no. Nothing to do with them being heavily bankrolled by billionaires, which are infecting the choices of millions of people, no. Disinformation, a win based on lies, is not democratic. It's a con. See, the choices that those idiots have made will have worldwide ramifications. And there's absolutely no conspiracy involved in this anything that I'm saying. But it sounds like it because people don't want to believe it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the people that I'm listening to are wrong. I don't have any form of ideological attachment to what I'm saying. If anything, I don't want it to be true. But what we are going to see unfold is going to be like nothing before. America won't be the same again. And you've got other world leaders coming out and congratulating Kim Jong Un because they diplomatically have to. They're dealing with an insular, small-handed, insecure, weak, fascist and anything less than that is war it's an affront if there was collective action or they had i don't know a backbone maybe things would be different if america had actually jailed him when they could have or prevented him from running again this wouldn't be happening but the fact of the matter is that millions of people in america decided women don't matter the insurrection doesn't matter all the charges brought against him doesn't matter the fact he's a rapist doesn't matter the fact that through force men will be able to choose the mother of their children doesn't matter no what matters more is hating the same people because as i said this isn't about loving america it's about grouping together to hate a target that some mad caricature told you you should hate 
and blame everything on because that's so much easier than taking responsibility for your own lives isn't it i feel incredibly sorry for black women in america today i feel incredibly sorry for the good people that did their best to fight this and i hope that brings them some comfort for what comes next because if they're going to resist this they're going to need to organize because making america great again will be the task of the protesters and the resistance to what is going to be four years of fascism so yeah great work nice one uh my advice to people is to enjoy life whilst they can and to not join cults led by mad pricks it's at times like this that i really really miss heavy drinking